guys, it's Intricate from Amiga Love. And I want to walk you through a really cool uh, program that I learned about this week from an online uh, friend of mine named uh, Tim Kovac. Thanks, Tim. Um, basically, it allows you to create your own custom icons for Workbench 1.3. I know there are a lot of different ways you can do this. There are a ton of programs that provide this uh, capability. But this is one in particular that I really fell in love with instantly. It's extremely intuitive. Uh, it's extremely simple interface to understand um, and within minutes anybody can create really cool looking uh, workbench icons all you got to do is just devote a little bit of time and and creativity and then I mean the I think the results kind of speak for themselves it's a lot of fun so I want to walk you through the program and maybe inspire a few, a few people out there to create their own and if you do gosh I hope you will share a link of uh, those images to us in the community so we can all see and maybe even share them on Aminet or whatever. So let's go have some fun with Icon Master by John Scheib from 1989. Okay guys, so this is the way that I made some custom icons on my workbench desktop. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could go about it. This is just the way that I did it to create some custom looks for some of the icons here for my drives. You can do this for hard drives, folders, tools, programs, whatever. Um, and I'll, I'll walk you through some of that, but this is just kind of a quick overview of the software that I used, which was made in the United States, I believe in uh, Las, in Nevada, somewhere in Nevada, uh, by a gentleman of uh, John Scheib back in 1989, if I remember correctly. Let's take a look. In any case, it's called Icon Master. And holy smoke, what an icon, right? That is pretty amazing. Someone spent some serious time on drawing all of these little things. Um, this was shareware that was uh, freely distributable uh, back in the 80s. And uh, if you sent in some money, he would send you version 2, which had a few more features. Uh, but let's take a look at what the free shareware version offers. All right, it's a pretty simple interface. You just kind of see uh, what you would expect to see if you went to uh, a particular icons uh, info. But basically you can see there are two shapes here. There's what they call the primary and the secondary. So this is the normal default state of your icon. And then this would be your, your secondary state if you wanted to do that. You don't have to. You can just make it to where if you click it, it's, it's orange or whatever. Um, I actually really like playing with this part. So I'll kind of show you how I go about that. Here it is, John Scheib. He also was not uh, notable for creating a... Um, a, a computer game based off of uh, Milborn, that Parker Brothers card game, um, which I've not been able to find his version, but I know it exists out there, and I'm still kind of hunting around. I, I really like this guy's work, so I wouldn't mind checking it out. Checking it out at some point. In any case, there's basically three drop-down menus to choose from. There's icons, which is just your typical file stuff. There's images, which I'll go into some detail there in a minute. And then these are the different types. Of icon types that you could create right so if you're just starting right off you can start right off the bat with these default squares so for instance you would say edit image primary image and now I'm in edit mode and so this is the default state of the icon as it exists today before I've even done anything um, these are different things you can do for positioning it within this uh, area this area down here which you see zoomed in right there this area basically is the clickable zone of the icon you can change this and make the icon really big I mean that's basically how they did the icon master when they created some ginormous icon out here um, in any case I wouldn't be doing all that we're just gonna kinda keep it nice and tidy I do keep mine a little wider because I've been doing some uh, hard drive stuff uh, but let's walk through some of these tools together so these are um, the positioning things and to let you see your alternate images, right? And see, I, I haven't uh, adjusted the alternate so you can see my clickable zone on the alternate is still set to default. If I were to click on auto top left, that would have w taken whatever I had here and snapped it into the upper left, which it already is. Auto center centers it inside of my clickable zone. Uh, auto resize tries to um, get rid of all the extra slack that you've created and then you can say auto top left and then auto resize again and make these nice and tidy based based on the uh, the artwork that you're working on right 
let's get this back out here for now. Right about there. And then I'll say auto center there. Um, now, you also have show alt image, right? Which we talked about a second ago. And then we have standard colors. That makes it brighter. I actually kind of like looking at it like that rather than this kind of dimmed out view. Okay, and then basically here are the colors you have to work with. There's not a lot, so you have to really put on your creative cap um, and think in uh, uh, very different terms than you normally would if you're in, say, Deluxe Paint or, or some other graphics editing program, uh, Personal Paint, whatever. You really just have to think in these terms. And the truth is, most of the icons out in the world really only focus on uh, these first four, which is the default blue, which is, um, it's basically a, a color, but it's also almost like an eraser. Because if you get rid of something, you're looking at the background, right? Uh, you got white, black, and orange. But then they create these other colors for you, which is really kind of cool. Uh, for instance, this light blue, it's not really light blue. It's actually the default blue with white next to it. So when you, but when you draw, it creates um, this kind of hatching pattern. And if you look down here, it does look light blue. Your eyes, it's sort of an optical illusion, right? It's just, this is pixel art 101, I know, but for those of you that haven't done this before, you can create new colors by using other colors um, with gaps in between and create these nice little shades. So like this would be what they would call yellow. It's really white and orange with gaps in between and it creates this sensation of, of yellow paint, see? Most people, when they created icons, they never did any of this stuff. They really just focused on these top four. Well, this opens up a whole new world, really. So instead of just dealing with four colors, you've got 10, which is kind of awesome. Um, now down here, these are the drawing tools. So um, this, this weird little mountain looking thing, that's actually just a, a pen tool. It just lets you freeform draw, right? You've got uh, what's basically a, an outline rectangular tool. So it's going to be something like this, right? You've got a circle. Let's get a different color in here. You got a circle outline. And so what that does is it starts from the middle of wherever you click to create your shape. Okay. And then you've got fill versions of the same. So here's line tool. This is a really handy one, especially for these icons, right? Because they're mostly boxes, most of the time. Uh, you've got a fill rectangle, super handy. Let's just go blue. It'll be like we're erasing all the stuff. Whee! All right. Okay. And then uh, you've got a circular fill. And then let's create another shape here. And maybe another shape here. Okay, now I also have a fill tool, which is sort of like a paint bucket if you've ever used Photoshop. So I can just click on that and make that instantly a color. Um, you can have a clear, that wipes out the entire thing, your entire canvas. So be careful with that one because there's only one level of this, one level of undo. So if you really go down into a rabbit hole um, and you click more than once to create that rabbit hole, just know that you're going to have to climb back out on your own. There's there's no software there that's going to help you out. All right. So now there's a couple other really cool things here worth uh, mentioning. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and clear the whole thing. Why not? Now I'll create a black background. There, that filled the entire button. See, and then I'm going to take this orange guy and I'm going to just make a circle. Uh, oh, <laughs> I'm going to make a square. Okay, now this weird looking thing is actually in uh, Photoshop land what they would call a clone tool. And it creates this almost like, oh my gosh, it's totally like Starflight where you're going to land your little uh, lunar uh, car on the planet. But basically it's trying to show you your, where you're about to click. Okay, so I'm going to click around this, click and drag around that orange shape. And now I've created a brush with the exact same shape. And this is how I created my lemmings. I created one lemming, then I used this tool to create the next two before I drew the fourth one, right? So here, pretend these are their heads. And you, can, and you can place them. If you mess up, you can always click undo and start over. See how that's not the same? 
gap, so I would want to come back over here and I can just put it back down again. Totally simple, very, very cool stuff. All right, now these little arrow tools will nudge the entire thing around. I've actually come to uh, basically ignore them. You can use them, but I found that, that they oftentimes uh, will crop my artwork in ways that I didn't want them to, and they, they kind of become bothersome to me. So I've been using this little scroll bar down here to, to change what I see in my viewable pane. Uh, it is kind of funny that this is a vertical tool and we're almost always working in horizontal land, but whatever. Beggars can't be choosers, right? Um, all right, so let's go out of here. If you're ever, if you think you're done, you click the done button. And now you can see this is what it thinks my primary shape is going to be for my new icon. Okay, well, that's kind of neat, but if I click it, it's still this weird thing bef that, I, that I have on the other side. What am I going to do? I don't want to have to redraw all that. You don't have to. You just have to go up to Images, and then you're going to say Copy Pry, Copy Primary Image to Secondary. Boop! Now I've got them both. Sweet! That's awesome. Now what? Uh, well, why don't we edit Image Secondary Image now? Okay, so now I'm looking at the click state, and I can still always go back to the primary if I want. So I'm going to say my click state is going to be baby blue fill right there right and then if I click on show all image those are my two click states now that I've just generated I say done okay so there's my primary and there's my clicking state if I thought I was done right I would say this is a disk for a hard drive that'd be what I would want to have selected as an option and then I'm going to save as, right? Let me show you how that works. I'm not going to actually change mine. I think you guys can kind of figure this out, but I'll at least kind of go through the process. So if I say save as, um, currently my system drive looks like a Supra drive from ancient times, back from like 1987, 88. I love that icon. Um, all my icons used to be Supra, but I've now made it to where I've got different ones, but I'm going to keep this the way it is. But basically what you do is you go to your your drive's root. If you're going to do a hard drive, go to a folder root, go to a, wherever your um, thing is that you want to change. There will be in there an info file associated with it. In this particular case, because it's a hard drive, this type of file is called disk.info. That's the hard drive um, icon on my, on my workbench desktop. If I were to click this and say OK, this file would overwrite Supra right now. It would overwrite, overwrite the one that I've currently used. Interestingly, um, if you wanted to utilize an existing icon, uh, which you absolutely can, as a base, you can go open. So for instance, let's go look at the Supra icon, right? Let's say I need to go into System, and I'm going to look for Disk Info right here. Say, okay, look, there's my super drive. Very cool. I could use this as a base. And in fact, this is exactly how I started kind of dinking around with some of these things to begin with, was I wanted to be like, oh, I like that shape, I like that size, but I might make it a little skinnier. And then I, I kind of went down a, a totally fun, creative zone. You can then say, edit default image. Uh, sorry, edit image primary. And now I'm looking, now look, he's actually too big for my viewable uh, pane here, this window. A little bit annoying, but whatever. It'd be kind of cool if you could move these things side to side, but you can't do that. You got to just deal with these constrained uh, sizes as they are. And then what you can do is you can say, "Oh, well, I'm going to just make SuperDrive totally crazy, and I'm going to I'm going to make it orange. It looks kind of brown, doesn't it?" Um, click on each of these. It works exactly the way you would expect it to. Right. There are times when I wish I could zoom a little bit, but you learn to deal with it. It's not that big a deal. Um, and so now if I were to click between the two, oh, see that actually works better than what they did. You'll notice there, you can't hardly see it on the screen, but this was their, def their uh, secondary image. They just made a blue and an orange dot in the corners. Whereas normally they're black. I can, I, you can't even see it. You can't even see it when you click. It's so subtle. It's kind of like, why'd you guys do that? Why'd you bother? You should have <laughs> maybe made the logo pop or something. Come on, guys. Uh, anyway, something else worth noting. Um, very important. So this is a 320 by 200 screen. Um, 
a lot of people these days, it's hilarious, they have an entire Reddit uh, channel devoted to pixel art where everybody draws in perfect squares. And they, they think this is being retro. And, and it is, it totally is, because it, if you were to look at this file uh, on your modern PC slash Mac slash whatever, um, the actual file that you export is going to look like squares. But the way you actually draw it is not a square at all. And let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. I'm in pen mode. Now, you'll, it's, it's a little difficult to see, but my cursor, the little color that I'm going to draw, is a vertical rectangle. Look at that. It is not a perfect square. Why? Because in four, three aspect ratios, um, these squares get stretched vertically. And you see all these crazy, crazy arguments sometimes in forums about people talking about how, you know, artwork's been distorted because of this, that, and the other, and perfect circles and all of that. Guys, when you actually draw perfect circles in here, the actual final file that's on the drive, if you were to view it on your modern PC, it's going to look like it's been squished. It's not going to look perfect unless you actually change the aspect ratio of that file to 4.3, which is what this monitor is. The actual file itself might be a square, but the exported one that we use our eyeballs with is going to be, uh, it's going to be vertically stretched. So check this out. In order to create squares, in order to create squares, you actually have to click twice. You have to put one next to the other. Two clicks equal a square here, not one. One gives you this little skinny pipe, basically. Kind of interesting. And I actually had to use this when I was doing the lemmings in order to create their feet and their hands. You couldn't just click once for a, for a square. You had to click twice for a tiny little hand or a foot or a piece of hair that was coming up, that kind of thing. Something, something that you'll kind of start to slow, it really kind of comes into clear focus as you're starting to draw in these programs as to how so much of the stuff out there that you see on the internet is completely, um, unfortunately, wrong because it's, you're viewing it as original files. You're not viewing it the way it was intended to be seen, the way the artists drew them themselves back in the day. They were looking at monitors like this that were stretching their pixels vertically. and so. At the end of the day, long story short, those should be converted to 4.3 to actually see the artwork the way it was intended to be seen. Anyway, enough of that. So, uh, this is pretty much the basics of how you would create your own icons using Icon Master. I will attach uh, an article below this video if you want to go play with this software yourself. I have not tested it to see if it will work in um, 2.0 plus, 3.0, etc. But it works beautifully in Workbench 1.3, and you, gosh, you get so many fantastic color options using the 1.3 palette. It is a lot of fun to do. I highly recommend it. If you've got it, check it out. If you've got 1.3 running on a machine somewhere, or if you want to fire it up on, in an emulator, a very, very cool piece of software uh, that's very simple and pretty easy to use. I hope I've uh, been able to illustrate that to some degree here. Um, and so for now, I think that's about it. So guys, that's Icon Master by John Scheib from 1989. I hope you enjoyed or maybe even learned a little something today as I walked through that program. Some really cool stuff you can create with it. And, and if you actually wind up downloading it yourself and playing around with some things, I would just totally love to see what you guys come up with. Just go ahead and uh, share those images with us and Heck, even share the files if you feel so uh, inclined. That would be really awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create more icons for some of my favorite programs that are iconless, or however you want to say that. Um, and I'll continue to make those over time and, and share them over on Amiga Love. And uh, so that's it. If you enjoy watching these kinds of videos, I hope you give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, if you like Amiga and Commodore stuff, that's what I'm all about. Uh, anytime I'm not work, uh, playing with my family or working, I'm doing Amiga stuff. So come along for the ride. We're going to have more fun. We'll see you next time. Take it easy.